The congregation of Emmanuel Ministry Church welcomes you to I Am Alive with Pastor Philip Trent, minister of the gospel for more than 25 years. Now get your Bible and a notebook and let's join Pastor Trent as he preaches the uncompromised Word of God. Well, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to I Am Alive. My name is Philip Trent. I pastor Emmanuel Ministry Church over in Hart County, Kentucky. We're about seven miles east of Horse Cave in a community called Lee Grand. If you go east out of Horse Cave and about seven miles, you'll be right in front of the church. If you left the, the red light or the light there in Horse Cave, we're seven miles exactly on the left, just around the curb past the Lee Grand Elementary School. Our schedule of services, sadly at this time, is only 10.30 on Sunday. Sunday mornings. We're not having Sunday school or Wednesday night service. Now we assume that we're going to have the, this service is coming up about the second week of August. So next week we might be, I'm thinking in a couple of weeks after we do this program here, we'll be back into full service mode. You can contact the church there or look at Facebook um, on my page, Philip Trent. I'll be telling people of their service changes and we think that'll come up real soon. We're about through this pandemic. Uh, we've had some people in our church honestly that was stricken with the, the, the problem. Uh, we don't think it come through our church, but uh, it's been in, in our church. So uh, we're, we're fine. Uh, the, all the people that was involved in it did not come to church. They quarantined themselves. So we're not, we're not. I, I've heard stories the other day, Phil, a fellow stopped to see me and, and uh, talked about how it was doing. And, and I told him, well, we'd, we'd, we'd had our problems. We'd had 11 people. He said, 11? He said, I'd heard you had over 60. <laughs> so uh, contrary to that, no, uh, we've had 11 people scattered out in the various areas of our church, but we don't feel like any of them brought it from the church home. It was from other places that they went. And who knows where this thing's at. But praise God, I'm just thankful that the blood supplied. Amen. We'll not be denied every promise of God's yes and amen. We're standing on Psalms 91, that it shall not come nigh our dwelling, praise God, and it won't. And if it does, we don't believe it will, but if it does, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. So we thank you for tuning us in tonight, and uh, we'll be back at our schedule real soon. Uh, let's have a word of prayer as we get into our service for tonight. And so glad to have our son back with us uh, again this time. Uh, he's been a very busy man throughout the summer, but he found the opportunity to come today to be back on TV with us, and I'm sure that suits you. So we'll get him stirred up and turn him <laughs> loose here eh, directly. Amen. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you thank for you, another Jesus. opportunity to be in these people's homes by the way of TV or DVD or whatever, however way they're picking this up and wherever they're picking it up. It may be in Southeast Pakistan. I don't know, but your spirit and your word will work for anybody that'll receive it. Anybody that'll allow the Holy Ghost to motivate and to come alive in them. I know you want to save everyone. So yes. I thank you for the grace of God that's brought salvation to us teaching us some things. And we yes. want to get into that Thank tonight, you. Father, if you'll lead us and guide us and help us. And if we understand your voice, we'll get right into it. And we thank you for giving us utterance in the Holy Ghost. Father, we pray that Jesus. your kingdom come and your will be done in our hearts and lives, that you'd be glorified and men and women be blessed and prospered according to your perfect will. We thank you for this TV program, those that's underwritten the expenses of this program, and those that's directing and taking care of business even here today. I pray for you would use them and bless them in a supernatural way. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray and ask, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Praise our Lord. foundation of Scripture is found in Romans chapter 1, and sometimes I get quite preachy feel when I yeah. get to reading this <laughs> because uh, uh, it's such a great truth to me. I mean, this is really the nuts and bolts of the whole gospel right here. Right. Uh, that Paul said, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you in verse 15, Romans 1 and 15, but 16 is where it's at. I'm not not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the good news gospel of Jesus Christ that's brought salvation to us. It's brought salvation to the world. And I'm so thankful for the grace of God and for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation. You see, it's only the grace of God, the gospel of Christ that brings salvation to a people. And you know, like I said last week, we've just sent a, a spaceship off to Mars. Well, if they found somebody up there, we need to go preach Jesus to them because that's the only way to get to God. 
Right, Amen. Right. If you're a Martian or you're on the moon, I don't care where you're from. Uh, if if you've got a spirit in you, you need to be born again and uh, so you can be ready for heaven and eternal life. So thank God for the gospel of Jesus. It is the power of God and the salvation to everyone believes the Jew first and also the Greek. For in it is, in the gospel of Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God explained. The righteousness of God is made available, available to you and to me through Jesus Christ, that great gospel. Amen. And what does that mean? That means Jesus Christ died for you. That means Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, was made to be sin, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So there's a lot in that. We could preach a few hours on that right there. But praise God for salvation. Amen. And I thank God for righteousness. My heart's kind of stirred tonight uh, towards a, pro a project that the Lord gave me actually when I pulled up in the parking lot out here. Uh, he gave me a scripture out of, uh, out of Ezekiel about standing in the gap. And I said to you last week, if you listen, about the Holy Spirit and the grace of God that empowers us. The grace of God, Phil, is an empowerment. The grace of God is not meant to go around behind us and, and, and erase our messes. No. Amen. Uh, people get uh, confused on the difference between mercy mm -hmm. and grace. Right. Okay, grace is God's ability in us to do what we can't do on our own. It's Amen. His power. It's His ability. That that definition came from Pastor Charles Cowan, and mm -hmm. he he preaches that it's God's ability in you to do what you don't have the ability to do on your own. That's right. So God's grace is His power working through you to accomplish His plan, His purpose upon the earth. It, it's not God's plan working through you and His power working through you for your plan or for my plan. God's grace is to help us to accomplish His plan. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it says that He's able to do abundantly above all we could ask or think because God's plan is bigger than you and I. God's plan being the body of Christ, being the salvation of the world. God's plan reaches to every person. He said that He's not willing that any would perish, but all would come to repentance. Well, the way that's going to happen is the grace of God working through you and I, His ability working through you and I to speak the truth, to minister to people in their physical needs and in needs of spiritual things. Things, whatever people need, it's God's ability and His grace that uh, allows us to be able to minister to those people. Now, mercy is where God forgives people. Amen. That's the forgiveness of God. That's the, that's the mercy of God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God you that you your present body. your Amen. body. Okay? Mm -hmm. God has been merciful to us and mm -hmm. He's forgiven us of our sin. Yeah. Uh, you know, He sent Jesus. Yes. And because of that He loved us. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference in grace and mercy. Many times we, we intertwine the two because they are many times working together. Absolutely. But also we have to understand that there is a difference, Dad, yes. that, that one is different than the other. And I need God's mercy because I've messed up. Mm -hmm. I need His mercy to, because I want to be in His family. But I need His, I need His grace because I want to serve Him and do what He's called me to do. And His grace allows us to speak and to do and to go and to be who He's called us to be. The grace of God has brought, if you could say it this way, the anointing mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ available to whosoever will. Right. Uh, if, if that, that God is such a loving God. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 4, for God who is rich in mercy Yes. For His great love with which He loved us. God displayed His richness of mercy by allowing His Son who knew no sin to be made sin for us so that we could be in right standing with God and live under this amazing grace. We're saved by grace through faith and God's mercy is what yes. brought that about. And I'm thankful for the mercy of God and the grace of God today. It sustains us. Amen. And there's a lot of things we want to get into, but I want to get into this scripture in Ezekiel. If okay. you uh, I can find that scripture there in Ezekiel. And it's about uh, the, the trouble that the nation of Israel was in at the time. They were in a mess and they had allowed some things to take place. Now I made mention last week about the, the, the prophets. We're supposed to have prophets all over the country. Everybody's prophesying this, that, and another. <laughs> but I did not hear any prophet myself say anything about a pandemic. 
I did not hear one word of prophecy as we entered into the year 2020. Everything I knew of was 2020 perfect vision. Boy, we're going to see this year perfectly what God's into and what God wants us to do. And I tell you, you're going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I mean, you're going to jump around like the calf just loose from a stall. I mean, all the regular prophecies come right. forth. There was no prophetic warning of a pandemic coming. Nothing of warning. Now, you know, and, and I look back and there should be, there should be, I'll just be honest with you, there should be a remnant church that's got an ear for the Spirit of God of warning of what's coming up next. You see, Noah was warned by right. God of something coming. Noah was warned to, to build an ark to save his family, to save his home, to save a people for God. Now, I'll tell you, I believe we need the prophetic warning today. Now, I, I hope and pray that everybody gets up and goes speaking doom, gloom, and disaster. I'm not at all about that, no. but I'm about the truth. So help me God. I don't know how many times in the last three months we've said, where is the truth? Right. You can't believe anything. It seemed like the news tells us. Right. We can't believe anything about to, what, the, what the prophets have tell us of doctors, of nurses, of right. even the tests that they make. Rhonda uh, uh, Ansley told me the other day about this young lady that came through the hospital where she works. It was raging fever. All the symptoms of this COVID-19, they tested her three times negative. The fourth time she tested positive. Now, how can you have any confidence in that? You, you can't. And, and you can't have confidence in anything to do with the world necessarily. That's right. Uh, it, it's you really have confidence sad. in the Word. Yes. We have confidence in God. Now, now you, said you, this, you said you hoped that people didn't get into the doom and gloom prophecies. Right. Well, let's look at, let's take the one that you mentioned, which was Noah. Okay. God warned Noah and he mm -hmm. told him. He said, you know, we're, this is what's going to happen. Noah went forth and he tried to tell people. Right. But nobody would believe it. The preacher of righteousness for he, over 100 years. He stood and preached. And, and I'm sure that people went by his house and they were looking like, well, look at that big boat this man's building out in his yard. He's got his sons working with him and his family's working so hard there's not even any water around here. This guy's crazy. And he tried to tell them about what was coming. He looked like a nutcase. He really did. But let me, let me point out that that prophecy wasn't a doom and gloom prophecy no, for wasn't. Noah. Mm -mm. It was doom and gloom for those who would not listen to God. But how many people were told that this was going to happen and they did not listen? Mm -hmm. Well, Noah we know told a bunch of people. We don't know that God told anybody else, but we know that Noah was a preacher of righteousness and he was trying to tell them. Absolutely. So, you know, just because that a prophecy comes forth that's of something bad that's going to happen, that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad for the body of Christ. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean it's bad for you and I or bad for the people that follow God because God always makes a provision. It, the Bible says, have you ever seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread? Begging bread? So for the believer the things that are going to happen and that are happening aren't necessarily bad things. Matter of fact, uh, just yesterday, uh, we talked about four different churches that we know of, one ministry, one traveling ministry, and three churches that we know of, that their income has been up since all this happened. And that's amazing. How is it that church's income goes up? But all of these churches are people that are adamant about following the scripture. I hear time and time again of people being tremendously blessed right here during COVID. Mm -hmm. I, I thought about my own daughter. My daughter in the second or third week of, that this happened, they laid her off. Mm -hmm. She was laid off in uh, less than two weeks. She had a new job and she was promoted again this week inside the new job and the new job is better than the other job and she got the new job right in the middle of COVID. And, and it's like, well, how in the world God's can that good. happen? Mercy. Because God's mercy. Now, what we're saying is there is a judgment. Yes. But the judgment is upon sin. Yes. God placed His judgment upon sin, upon the sin nature. Mm -hmm. And a person that's living righteously, even though judgment's going on around them, what happened with Noah? Mm -hmm. He was floating on the boat. Yeah. Noah was taken care of. So when we read these prophecies and some of the things we'll even read here in a moment, you might say, oh, that's kind of scary. Well, it's not scary for the believer. 
It's, you know, Paul made this though. statement. It is a warning, but it's not scary. No. Because Paul made this statement. He said, I'm in a straight betwixt two. He said, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, Absolutely. but it's needful that I stay with you. Amen. Because he had set his affection on things above and not on things on the earth, mm -hmm. his affection was up there on God, upon heaven, upon the things of God. Because your affection is on that, when bad things happen in the earth, it doesn't have the same effect upon the believer right. that it has upon normal people that are not believers, just Amen. regular everyday folks that haven't uh, maybe even given their heart to Christ or aren't, they, maybe they're born again, but they're not really living for Christ. Man, fear can overtake you. The Bible says God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Amen. So when judgment is spoken of and we see judgment spoken of, the person that's following God because they are judged according to the blood of Jesus that's been applied over them when they became born again. They're not fearful of God's judgment upon the earth. Mm -hmm. He said, I've, seen, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. That's why we've got to live in the righteousness of yeah. God in Christ so that when the judgment comes on the earth, oh my goodness, people are dying of COVID. Yeah, they are. But that's not where I'm going to try to stay at. I'm, I'm going to stay in the Word. I'm going to stay with what God says. I'm going to do what He said. So when you hear prophets, you know, Dad was speak, speaking a minute ago. He said, where are the prophecies of some of the things, you know, the, the truth? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes when the truth comes about, your physical man can that make them a little nervous. Mm -hmm. Okay? But because we are led by the Spirit, and our affection is on the things of heaven, and our affection is in Christ and in Him, and, and, and we love Him, these things that are going on the earth, they really don't have the same effect on us as they do a non-believer. So don't let fear get involved when you hear a prophecy of judgment. Mm -hmm. Because I am judged according to the blood of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus is completely clean. Well, what if you die? Well, hallelujah. Amen. I mean, death is a victory for the believer. So if, if you've got your affection set on the things of God, now I don't want to die. I'm not, not getting up a load to go to heaven today. <laughs> That's not my point. But my point is for the believer, for people that are believing in Christ, all of this stuff is like water off a duck's back. Amen. Well, my goal, my goal with this, to bring this up, is to motivate and yes. to... Uh, get people, uh, our, our watching audience, to be a part of standing in the gap. That was the word that the Spirit of God gave me this morning, was about standing in the gap. Because I do believe that we're just in the beginning of sorrows, that this thing, in a sense, will always worse and worse and worse. Now, I think we'll go through some ebbs and flows. It's may ease yes. up here in some ways. But we know by the Scripture that it's going to get worse and worse because the love of God, love for God, has grown worse. Yes. It's, gone, it's, it's waxed cold. So when the Bible says when that love for God waxes cold, then things are going to get worse for humanity. Now we find a place here to where the children of Israel had allowed themselves to get off base. Mm -hmm. They'd allowed themselves to get in a mess and they had begun to do things that God didn't uh, accept. It wasn't right in the sight of God. Now I realize that we could go in the Old Testament, we could pick up all kinds of scriptures and we can make points. But my point here is that God looked for a man. God wants to be merciful. Yes. God does not want to judge you or your family right. or a nation. He wants to extend His mercy and grace. And I believe He does that for today. I believe He's wanting Absolutely. to extend His mercy and grace for our lands today. But is He is He finding a person to stand in the gap? So let's look at just a little bit of this and we'll narrow it down because of time. In Ezekiel chapter 22 and uh, verse 28, and her prophets have dabbed them with untempered mortar, uh, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord, when the Lord had not spoken. Now, I, I understand we should edify one another. We, the voice of common modern day prophecy today right. is to edify, to build up, to strengthen. But I'm telling you, when people are going against the plan of God, 
When people are going against the will of God, when they're not walking in the spirit realm, you can prophesy all kinds of things to them. It doesn't necessarily mean that God's going to back right. up your prophecy. Well, the Bible says that we are to judge ourselves. Absolutely. That we be not, not judged. judged with the world. Right. So if, if I'm judging myself, mm -hmm. I can put myself in a great position by judging myself and saying, now, you're going to live this way and you're going to do this according to the word. Judge yourself so that you don't fall under that worldly judgment. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you, judgment is coming, coming. because God is a God of law. Mm -hmm. it, we talk about the law of faith. We talk mm -hmm. about the law of love. We talk well, about grace and mercy. There are laws just like the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. But you can't just say, well, because God loves us, that there's no judgment. That's not true. Think about it, Jew, uh, uh, what was his name? It went down into Sodom. Was it? Uh, J um, You're talking about uh, Abraham. Abraham, and his, Abraham's uh, nephew. His nephew, Lot. Yes, Lot. Yes. Lot vexed his righteous soul day by day. He was a righteous man. He was a godly man, and he sought the things of this world. And because he he should have went down and had an effect on Sodom. Right. We should have the church going out with a light to affect the world. What's happened? The world has had more effect on the church. Right. This is not going the right way. Right. And God is saying, because you prophets have not brought judgment, you've not stood up before the people and warned them sufficiently. You see, I believe that's what was wrong. Their, their mortar was untempered. It, they hadn't told them the fact that God judges this. If you keep lying and killing, what about America today? That we've killed and aborting babies by the thousands? Right. We've, we've sanctioned marriage that God will not be involved in? No. We're doing all kinds of things that's hideous in the sight of God. And who's standing up with the warning? Who's talking about this? We, we talk about the great nation of America. It is a great nation. It's a prosperous mm -hmm. nation, no doubt about that. But I'm telling you, if we keep going the wrong way, eventually God's judgment is going to come upon the nation that continues that. What's he looking for here? Let's go on, Phil. He said in verse 30, he said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge, that should stand in the gap before me for the land. In other words, God was saying, in the midst of all this stuff, the prophets have, have spoken wrong words. They promised them all kind of stuff that I can't back up as God. And if you go up and read all kind of scriptures here, and I could have, uh, many things that the nation of Israel was doing was ungodly, asinine in the eyes of God. But right. the prophets was telling them how blessed it was and how good it was and how yep. everything is going to be a chicken, never pot, you know, gooses hanging high for everybody. Okay. Uh, but and it, God was saying, I'm looking for somebody now that will stand in the gap. In other words, he's saying, I, my word is out. I've got to bring judgment because I said, if you sow these seed, you're going to reap this crop. Right. And he was looking for a man. I want to motivate you, my friend. Notice I the, want to ask you. Yes. Notice this right here. Mm -hmm. And I sought for a man. Right. Okay. He was looking. Yes. It wasn't just that that he was passive about it. No. You know, when, when God is seeking, he's looking. He's not he sought for a man. Right. He said, I sought for a man among them. Amen. I, I was looking for anybody. Amen. You know, God's looking for us. Amen. Uh, he's looking for all believers. And that's what to, I want to motivate the, our watching audience yes. to be a part of that. I want us to go to work uh, in prayer before God. I want us to plead for the nation of America and Israel, God's chosen people. Yes. I want us to go to prayer and ask God and be honest and seek God with all of our heart. Because I tell you, there's some bad stuff going on in this country. No yes. doubt about no that. Doubt. If you can't see that, you've, you, you've lost vision completely. God is, because God did not want to bring judgment upon this land. That's why he was looking for somebody. Now, thank God for us, Phil. He found somebody. His name was Jesus. Absolutely. We've got the man that he looked for. Absolutely. And we've got to walk in his spirit. We've got to live after him. Absolutely. And see, here's a grace now that's been so so uh, un, ungodly uh, divine, uh, uh, talked about. The definition of grace has been just a, a great excuse. You can do anything you want to. Make no yeah. difference now. Yeah. 
That's, that's not, not true. the truth. If you no. sow to the flesh, you're going to of the flesh reap corruption. That's right. I don't care if you're born again, child of God or not. You may not go to a devil's hell in your spirit, but you're sure going to have some hell here on earth. And you're going to produce a lot just like Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom. And what did he get? Him and his two daughters and his wife got partially out. But she was so sad and looked back because she's leaving everything her heart's desire wanted in Sodom, she turned to a pillar of salt. Right. What happened to all the rest of that family? Are, are we so foolish to think that we raised in a Christian home and we lived 40, 50 years and our parents and grandparents took us to church. Now we're raising a bunch of heathen kids that don't know Jesus from the, from the, uh, uh, a monkey and we, we think everything's going to be all right? Well, look, look at this scripture. We don't have a whole lot of time. I know. But I'll, I'll open this up. In Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, it says, uh, let's look in the, what, tenth verse. And it shall be when the Lord God shall have brought thee into the land which we, he swore unto your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give thee great and godly cities which do, you did not build. Mm -hmm. Well, think today. The generations before this generation today built these cities. Right. We're adding on to them, but, but there was a whole generation before. And houses full of good things which you didn't fill. Right. Well, we got a whole generation of people that have houses. They've been and, born with right, a silver spoon. They, they've been, been, really? Right. And wells that you didn't dig. Right. And vineyards that you didn't plant. And olive trees you didn't plant. You've been when born thou shall a have blessed eaten nation. and be full. He said, mm -hmm. when you are full... Mm -hmm. He said, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth Come out of now. the land of bondage. Shake that bush a little bit right there. You forget it because you never knew him. Mm -hmm. You don't forget people that you knew, and you don't forget fights that you had to fight. When you didn't have to fight to get where you are today, mm -hmm. you forget about it. They, they used to set memorials back in this day. They would stack stones where God did great things for them. Do you know we have a whole generation? I, I asked a group of young people here recently. I said, how many of you have seen God do a miracle? And less than 10% of them had seen it with their own eyes. I'm telling you, God doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And if God doesn't change and things have changed, that means we change. And he said, beware. This is in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. He said, beware lest the, that you forget the Lord. Amen. So a, a generation here hasn't known God mm -hmm. the way they should, and they're beginning to forget. And you know that by looking at church attendance. And I, I know, well, we got COVID. Well, all right. I understand that. But it says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. So when your church opens back up, you go. Right. When your church is available, you go. But we've got generation of young people that less than half of them when churches were open, were going to church. Mm -hmm. so, so forget COVID. Let's go back to January. Before COVID, less than half of them were attending church. Why? Because they've forgotten the Lord who blessed this country. You know, and you, they're now taking the Lord's name out of the schools, off the courthouse walls, the Ten Commandments are gone, and they have forgotten. You know, when you labor to do something, you give, you give your blood, sweat, and tears into it, then you're going to take care of it better that's than right. somebody that's just walked into the thing. Yes, that's so right. God is not desirous to pour out the wrath. And I know no. that His wrath is not coming upon the children of God. I believe He'll take them out here before. My gazar is, can we extend this time for the sake of the ungodly? Can we pray? Can we seek God and get this thing postponed? Because I believe the wrath of God has to come. His word is out there. As sure as he poured it out on Sodom and Gomorrah, he will have to judge this nation also. So let's stand in the gap and pray and be one of those that's seeking God for an answer. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Yeah.